the oil paint has this great ability to, so like, depending on how you layer it, you can have this transparent effect where when light shines on the painting, it'll actually penetrate through layers of paint and, and, and hit the, whatever the base color is, so white, and it'll light up certain areas. So it has a bit of a, like a specular quality to it. Um, but I'm like, I'm just learning about this. So I, I also, I'm, I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go, but I'm realizing that the medium itself is incredibly, incredibly deep. I'm Garth Laidlaw. I'm a fine artist, illustrator, and animator. I did a little bit of oil painting back in high school, and I liked it back then. I liked that it had the ability to kind of smoothly um, blend, uh, whereas acrylic felt so like terse compared to it. Um, and oil painting, that the paint quality is is very rich. Like you can you can add these darks that are the, like the darkest darks you can imagine, and then these really really bright lights as well. So the, the value spectrum is really great with oils. This is how I understand it. So there's like a purple and then there'll be like uh, the same value but a different hue of yellow. So it's like uh, um, complementary colors. Mm -hmm. And when you put them beside each other, they, they flicker. They like, because when you look at a color, it's never like solid. Because if, if I were to just paint this one solid color, you wouldn't really that it would feel like a painting, um, but it wouldn't feel like how we see the world, how light actually happens, because light has this flickering quality to it, especially when you see like light through dark or, um, so the impressionists were kind of trying to get this way of making the areas actually look like they were like flickering, like the actual effects of light versus like our perceived optical effects of light. So, um, I, 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 I'm not that bold with my colors yet, but I'm trying to increasingly get there where I can have like this flickering feeling throughout. And it feels like every color is very alive versus just a static kind of motion. Um, it's hard to explain, but in a lot of Monet's work and Cezanne, they're very good at this effect. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, what I'm building up to, but I mean, right now I'm just painting blue. <laughs> <laughs> Oil painting is also the most tactile paint in some ways because it's almost like you're sculpting or you're molding it gradually. It, it, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's just incredibly deep. So I was like, that is the most, um, it feels like the most tactile paint to me, I guess, where you're really physically moving material around and you can use it really thickly. You can re use it really thinly. So there's a lot of diversity in what the paint can, like some oil paintings could look like almost like watercolor painters. And then you've got painters like Monet, which is like incredibly thick and, and almost random strokes that look like wasn't even really done by a human. Like everything I do is hand drawn. So I, that term means a lot of things to a lot of different people, but basically I'm still using a Cintiq to, to draw. So I'm, I'm, even if it is like very straight line and graphic, it'll always be a sketch first. And I prefer sketching first because it, it allows me to make it feel like it's done by a human. So many graphics just look like they're just literally cut out of, or they're paper cutouts, I guess, or like very, um, very corporate and clean. And I try to do the opposite of that. So again, I, I really want, no matter what art I'm doing, I want it to feel like it's made by a human. Um, I really like, I'm a huge fan of like visible brush strokes. So um, like, because the, there's so much to go into about this, but basically the classical school of painting is for the painter to be invisible, just like an editor, you wouldn't want to notice the cuts. Okay. You wouldn't want to see the strokes. You want it to just to be a, you don't want to be able to distinguish this that I'm creating from the actual scene itself, basically. Okay. Um, and whereas the modernists were like, let's see the brush strokes. Like, where is the painter in all of this? They're not present at all. So there's this whole dialogue of like, how visible should the painter be? And I'm, I don't know. I, I, I love seeing brush strokes because again, it's like that humanity piece where like you can see the painter in the brush strokes that they, that they make. I really resist the whole idea that um, art is can like, th it's the machine that makes the art. Uh, I think as much as we can, no matter what project, whether corporate or not, um, everything's better with the human face. I've been doing a lot of landscape painting, but I also, I really love painting full stop. <laughs> so, I mean, I run a figure drawing class as well, and I also have painted many figures, and I love doing still lifes. Um, it really, I, I expect 
for like throughout my artistic career that I'll be changing a lot. I don't think I'll be staying a landscape painter forever. Um, although I think I, I love doing it. Part of what really draws me to it is that I can do it on location and in the summertime I can do it outside. It's the best office you can hope for. So um, yeah, I, I think like right now I'm doing landscapes, but I, I'm like whatever commission comes at me, I'm like, yes, because again, the more time I'm there, uh, the better. <laughs>